Blammo. Yeah. So that means we, we are officially uh, recording now. And, you know, I, I just got to say, uh, you know, I, I was struggling to finish this uh, remix earlier um, just because it's it's kind of a yucky issue to talk about. You know, I mean, there's a lot of issues that were unearthed, shall we say, at the Chabad Lovovitz there in New York City with the whole underground mm. juicy tunnel network there. But the the image that remains indelibly stained upon my mind is the juicy mattress. And and it got yeah. to the point to where I started making a juicy mattress video. But but then I had a song and I was like, well, I really like the one with the Benny Hill, but the Benny Hill is really old and it's like, well, I'll just remix the Benny Hill. But then it was just missing something. And that's when I reached the point where I thought I would never say I was so glad I found the Israeli national anthem. But luckily, Hatikva saved the day on the Juicy Patris, uh, juicy Mattress remix there. Mattress Juice yes. what it's called. Mattress Juice. Well, that was one um, of... One of the many things that we missed while we were on hiatus in the month of January, because uh, of course yeah. now it's February, it's Black History Month, right? So we we have like a whole new set of horrors to face uh, as as the calendar rolls forward. Well, to to begin our celebration of Black History Month, uh, can anyone in the chat uh, put down how many hours it was until the White House? found out that their Secretary of Defense, I'm sorry, Secretary of Raytheon, or what's his name? Lloyd Chairman. Blankfein. Chairman Austin. Austin. Lloyd Austin. Yeah. Lloyd Blankfein. That's a different asshole. Um, Lloyd Austin. And he, he, like, he had like gone under the knife and was under anesthesia and getting chopped on the table or something in a hospital. Mm -hmm. and was like incapacitado for just like totally Mr. Potato Head, I think for three or four days. But allegedly, apparently there was like two days or so that went by until the illegitimate militarily installed powerless puppet government actually found out that the uh, lead salesman for the defense industry was having some McSurgeries done there. Right. Getting his uh, McNuggets replaced or whatever. Right, and losing a bunch of weight and uh, a couple of inches of height in the process, uh, apparently. I know. I noticed that because he was given his whole I didn't spiel realize about that when you had prostate Iran. surgery, it makes you shorter. And I was like, oh, my God. He's on that fucking... Um... Is he doing the P90X? Is that what's going on? Oh, what's it called? The uh, Ozetra? Uh, Ozempic. Oh, Zampic. Yeah. Yeah, like Mike Pompasejo. Oh, the, Pompeo's Mr. doing... We lie, we cheat, we steal, we lose 200 pounds overnight. No shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. I gotta, I gotta search up When's some When's the last time you him? looked at Mike Pompasejo? He, 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 it's been a while. Him and Lloyd Austin are on the same Ozempic crash diet, dude. Oh, wow. Well, I mean... Not surprising. They're, they're 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 fasting for a new Kabuki casting, and they're up to task. See, that's just freestyle. You know, the thing of it is that every get back harder, we just back harder and harder, and it just flows from beginning to end. But we don't story forward this shit, huh? right? You know, we we don't get behind the Wizard of Oz curtainry there with with the special glasses and and cook this shit up in advance. I mean. You know, we generally have somewhere where we want to go, and there's a few bases to hit on the way to sliding into home. But the important thing is that we all grow together spiritually. It's, it's all about getting higher, getting more into truth, tuning into the inner stillness and peace that is required in order to break through all the dissonance. You know, it's it's the best way to describe it it's that feeling when your Smith Munt act feels modernized mm. as fuck. That's when you know it. I take time out, disconnect digitally, reconnect naturally, 
fucking bust into the purple shorts, turn green, and get Hulk on some weeds. Anyway, back go. to you, Colonel yeah. Drizzle. That's the report from the no, field. I, was, from I think El I, I was. Yeah, I think I was feeling a little Smith Munt earlier this week. So uh, you know, it's a nice synchronicity that that you bring that up. Uh, but now I I have a whole different take on this whole Lloyd Austin thing that I haven't I haven't heard anybody uh, say this anywhere really. Like the the few people who have actually dared to talk about it because I guess like it's supposed to be a taboo subject or something. I think it's funny as hell. But <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that the dude didn't actually have cancer, that this is all like a PR stunt done mm. to uh, reach out to uh, what what is considered to be the black community, the male members of the black community, to get them in to see their, their doctors so that he can go and, you know, write up the poop shoot and make them feel even more powerless than they already do. And I got to say, Lloyd Austin of the uh, Department of Raytheon found the coolest fucking way possible to play off a bariatric surgery. Well done, sir. Well done. You think it was bariatric? Uh, it, it, it was you think cancer. that's what he went under the knife for? Yeah, he got that fucking lap belt cinched up on there. You know what I'm saying? It's like a hefty cinch sack. You just pull that string and toss Boom. that thing. Boom. Yeah. Bye-bye, 200 poundies. Well, I think you could be right. And like I said, you know, uh, the Koch brothers' favorite mayonnaise, uh, Mike Papasejo, you know, he there, there was a moment when I could see a future for the Yona tribe in the Andean Altiplano, hmm. teaching the younguns. Appalachian, Virginian English, as well as Cherokee, as well as some Quechua and Spanish for good measure. But then, just days before Rafael Vicente Correa Delgado, el presidente del Ecuador, just days before he's going to hand over the uh, Miss Universe pageant sash that they wear diagonal you know it, it's a presidential sash because they have sashery with sass and class hello and um that always amused me it's super like, gay why the hell and, is he wearing a fucking sash is it beauty passion what the fuck and so literally his replacement wheels in because he's in a fucking wheelchair lenin bolsaro moreno um more like Bolsonaro. Anyways, um, so Lennon Moreno wheels in it, and he was actually politically supposed to be aligned with, you know, the Pais Alianza. And anyways, it's complicated. I don't want to get into all the political parties of Ecuador. That's a whole other ball of wax. But point being, oh, shit, that's right. What happened to Ecuador? Right. Like that was in the in news, Ecuador and then it was gone. gone for two years, and. And I have to cover some Ecuadorian type Ecuador stuff tonight because yeah 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 um, I want to hear that I've been getting some reports that really fucking me up, dude. I can't, where's my bowl at, man? It, it's really bad. It it's bad, bad man. But anyway, yeah, dude, because um, they made that go away quick. Like it it uh, hit the news cycle, and then within twenty four hours, you weren't fucking hearing about it anymore. So. Anyways, I'm dreaming of a future in Loja or Vilcabamba or maybe moving closer to the capital at Quito. Then we visited Guayaquil and they were like, oh, it's so dangerous and there's guns everywhere. And I was like, this, this feels like South Richmond. I'm good. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's like Petersburg. Call it home. Call it home. Hmm. I'm, I'm right on the banks of James. I can smell the fish fuck in the air. Uh, Apparently you know, not quite know. East St. Louis. The, the there's a smell, there, 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 especially when the Chesapeake tide is coming in. Mmm, mm, yummy fish fuck. Anyways, uh, but it's got crab sperm and everything mixed in there. I, that, that's what they make Maryland crab cakes out of. That's mm. why they're the Durpin or Turpin or Derp or uh, however you say that. Maryland. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's try. see. Who am I going to shit on next? So. I'm in Ecuador, and 
And I see that just two or three days, so this would be like May the 21st, Lennon Moreno meets with fucking Mike Pompasejo in Manta, where the former fucking air base was used. Uh, well, at current, it, it's an Ecuadorian Air Force base, but there was a, uh, oh, don't we love those memorandum of understanding? Mm. And there was a memorandum of understanding. That the DEA and everybody else could, you know, traffic drugs through the Manta uh, Air Force Base there on the Pacific coast of Ecuador. I'm sorry, did I say traffic? I meant fight drug trafficking. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, and of course, uh, when the economist and college degree fucking uh, Rafael Correa took office, he made the ultimatum that, hey, the only way I'm going to let America continue to use Ecuadorian bases is if I can open up these two Ecuadorian bases in Miami-Dade County. I had my real estate agent look at these three different properties. Which one would the U.S. government be agreeable with for the Ecuadorian military to begin using? And, of course, the U.S. State Department was like, well, you're knocking butts, Joe Dirt. And he's like, okay, then. All you DEAs and CIAs and the rest of your fucking armies and air forces and everything and your five little lily pads and Ecuador, you can get the fuck out. But, like I say, now let's go back to May 21st, three days before he's got to go. Here's Lennon Moreno down there chumming it up with a still somewhat rotund and pudgy Mike Pompeo. But he was already transitioning to the... Oh, what's the name of the weather guy that lost all that weight? Black dude on NBC. Roker. Al Roker. Ro yeah, Al Roker, right? Yeah, he, he was like about halfway through the Al Roker transformation. Kind of like when oh, wow. the worm goes into the cocoon and, and the pupa turns into a beautiful skin and bone skeletor ready to run for political office and 200 pounds lighter. So anyways... He meets with Mike Pompeo, and I turn to my old lady. I'm like, um, we're going to have to get the fuck out. If, if, if Pompeo is chummy with Lennon Moreno, then all the shit's about to hit the fan, and we're going to need to get the fuck out. All right? Well, about right, a week later, obviously. a week later, and maybe four days into his term, he's already going after his vice president, Jorge Glass, trying to get him arrested and this whole Odebrecht scandal and all this stuff. And uh, it, it immediately turns into a witch hunt of going after people in his own political party. And then lo and behold, Julian Assange loses his citizenship. He's sold mm -hmm. out. Ecuador lets them just go into the embassy and cart Julian out the embassy steps in London over to the Belmarsh prison where he's been ever since. And then uh, the Fondo Monetario Internacional, or as we love to call it, the I motherfuckers, International Monetary Fund, uh, gave Moreno El Paquetazo the package, um, which required, of course, that they change their sovereign laws, change their constitution, do away with their subsidies for heating oil and cooking oil and gasoline and basically completely piss off the entire clase obrera, I'm sorry, working class in Ecuador. The Zanganos, the little drone beats. And that right. led to the Revolución de los Zanganos, the, the, the drone worker bee revolution, which was brutally fucking suppressed in Ecuador. Thanks to some help from the IDF. Go Israel. Hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, actually, Whitney Webb, one of the only other people I've heard talk about Ecuador. Love you, Whitney. Keeping it real. At least, you know, there are a few people that are talking about it. And they're, and the shit's about to hit the fan in Haiti, too. Because, you know, when you're having a world war, multiple theaters, it's like a brand new movie. I'm, how many places can we get this to screen at, you know? Um, right. I mean, I think uh, right now we've got, what, 
Last count was around 850 U.S. military bases in 190 countries. Um, although not all of those bases are covered under um, memoranda of understanding. So anyway, uh, uh, just ask the three um, African Americanized uh, soldier fodder cannon fodder thingies that uh, got killed in Syria, oh, yeah. or was it Jordan? Jordan. Oh, it definitely it was, was Jordan. Jordan. De- it was Jordan. Was yeah. Jordan. No, 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 no. No, Tower Twenty Two was just across the line in Syria. Right? Was it? Guys? I thought no, it was, it was in, Jordan. in Jordan. Yeah, but it totally wasn't supposed to be Which, in Jordan. Oops. Uh, well, yeah. Oops. Again, my question: Why are our troops inside of other sovereign nations where they can get bombed and killed? Like, what the fuck's going on there? Right. I like the way uh, Rome and and what and Nick were talking about it. Jay Compton Jay there on the RBN earlier today. They said those three Negroes were like the keys that you jangle for the cat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To come and play. Come on, get the absolutely. <laughs> Just or or as GoPro would say, that's the bait on the hook. They're, they're Uncle Sam fishing with live bait. You know oh saying? yeah. <laughs> well, I mean that's how you do it, right? If if you want to get results. You know, you got to. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why eggs. that's why President James Polk sent those green jacketed army soldiers well to the south of the River Nueces and Corpus Christi, which was the agreed upon border between Mexico and Texas. The Nueces River goes from Corpus Christi inland. Anyway, anyways, so uh, he sends them all the way to fucking. Um, Oh, what's that town called there? Uh, Matamoros. Matamoros. I know Matamoros. In, in, uh, in the Estado de Tamaulipas, Mexico. Uh, Tamaulipas mm-hmm. State, Mexico. And yeah. they start even firing. even Mexico's northeasternmost uh, city. That's right. Right there at, the, at uh, a la boca right del there. Rio de los Bravos, at yeah. the mouth of the Rio Grande, um, which they call Rio de los Bravos, or River of the Indians. Yeah. Um, interesting. Uh, so, uh, and the reason they call it the River of the Indians is because there's so many Indians that cross that river into freedom, into Mexico. Which we might get into that later. You know, yeah. everyone's talking about the immigration from the Mexican side to the Texan side, but I don't think that many people know about how many Irish immigrated into mexico there was an entire irish brigade of cannoneers and hmm. artillery men that fought they were known as the san patricios and they fought with the mexicans to defend chapultepec and the capital of mexico from the invasion by president polk sending his army led by the young officer corps of Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant, mm. who fought side by side from mm. Veracruz all the way up through Pueblo to Mexico City. Anyways, I, I'm not trying to drag it out here, but the, the long story short, those soldiers were sent, you know, four days fucking horse ride south of Corpus Christi, all the way through the Falfurious Plains and uh, all the way down to the Fast and Furious border, am I right? ATF, <laughs> and uh, and they get down there and they and they hastily construct a crude little uh, fortification that they call Fort Texas. Yeehaw! Set up cannons, start shelling Matamoros. The Mexicans respond. They tell the Green Jackets, "Green, go away." Green, go away. And the people in Matamoros oh, yeah, yeah. literally start chanting, Green, go away. Yeah. Green to repel the invasion. And fun fact to this fucking day, Mexicans still refer to United States citizens as gringos. And it is a pejorative term. It literally means That's true. invader. Yeah. Gringo, invader. Because it's green, go away. Get the fuck out. Yeah, um, but anyway, well, when I was living in Acapulco, I always used it to refer to myself because uh-huh. it it conveyed the idea that I needed to be conveyed in shorthand. Yeah, 
and we both knew what it meant. Because they have a word for American. Right. That's not pejorative, but that's a stato in idense. Yeah. It's a lot of syllables. And, you know, unless you're doing the Duolingo every day or you're just on a polyglot level like uh, Viona, just stick to fucking gringo. Estado unidense. A estado unidense. See, I, I can slow it down. Yeah. I'm still, you know, you don't want me to take it to Norman Finkelstein speed because it'll be two minutes. No. But, uh, no, we ain't got time for that tonight. But so back to Ecuador, right? Do you still have contacts in the country down yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Monica like, and, and Ricardo and Santiago. And yeah, man. All right. So and Cuenca and Waikil and Quito. What the fuck I, happened? I check in with them every day. Yeah. What now. the fuck happened at the beginning of January or beginning to mid part of January, whenever it was? And then, like, what was the aftermath? Because, like, again, the the story that we were sold was it was the cartels rising up against the government. The cartels that are allegedly rising up against the government are just like Jimmy Barbecue and the so-called gangs in Port-au-Prince that must be suppressed that are trying to overthrow the Gouvernement of uh, Henri, just the same as we have our beloved crew cut socks and Crocs Patriot Front. <laughs> and khakis. They're surfers. They're all surfers, khakis. man. Oh, man. They're all surfers. So khaki stylish. shorts and, and glow in the dark lower leg. Yeah. Big bust, you know, working out the arms. All right. So sleeping brown shirts. on the cab. It was brown shirts, essentially. Um, gotcha. And, that know, makes I sense. Mean, that makes sense then. You know, because uh, it's it's a it's like a, a, a smash and grab type thing, right? You, well, you want to hit the public the really oppression. really quick and get in there with the fear that it's going to happen again, right? So that that gives the government more leverage to do whatever they want to do because they're domestic terrorists, they're insurrectionists. Yeah, the Ecuadorian government is fighting domestic terrorism. It's the same. It's weird. It's like the CIA is using the exact same playbook in Latin America that they've always fucking used, and then they used it in America to get the Banana Republic of the Shits and Giggles Clown Administration militarily installed with thirty-eight thousand troops and a green zone. To ring the new federal military district of the District of Columbia because they've now further subdivided Washington, D.C. into mm. the Green Zone and the rest of D.C. Uh, and technically, I don't think that Southeast D.C. even counts as D.C. anymore because it's across the Anacostia and it's just poor people. And- yeah. yeah, there's really nothing over there. Anyways, um, enough of DC. <laughs> Poor suckers. Man. <laughs> they don't even have a, a locale anymore. They're just southeast. Yeah. Southeast what? I, I don't know. Oh, southeast. It's, it's like about two minutes before you hit the Beltway. And, right. uh, there's no exit, so you have to get off on the other side and then go back underneath. And There's no access to it. Because it used to all be like Navy bases and stuff, most of it. And of course, mm. thanks to the uh, Base Realignment and Closure Committee, or BRAC, um, the vast majority of the military installations that were in the United States uh, uh, are something else. Right. They're all something else today. Like, well, you know, they the were base where I got my DD 214, Fort Ord, California, it's now. University of California at Monterey Bay. Really? Great spring bake parties there. In the Seaside, California, man. Bro, ask uh, Steve Poikin in there at AIM Wake Up about those Monterey and Santa Cruz beach parties. He fucking knows. Man. All right. I will if I get the chance. I would like to talk to Steve again and actually like finish the conversation, you know, without the chickens <laughs> taking him out. I jumped in on his other show the other night. Um, I guess it was last week. Of course, 
what show would I jump in on? But Blunt Force with me. Well, of I course. Mean, I yelled at me. That's right. where, where else would you expect to find me? Well, no, I wouldn't expect you to be on like Slow News Day. No. Of course not. That's why we get back harder around here. Speaking of which, um, you know, we haven't mentioned Ukraine. Oh, there, we just did. Moving on. <laughs> um, right, moving and on. we also forgot to mention Gaza. Yeah, it's still a genocide uh, ongoing. No ceasefire. That's right. Ongoing. Nothing to ongoing. see here. ICJ said, uh, try not to genocide as much. Otherwise, we're going to say it's genocide. Um, right. Okay. Got well, they also covered. said Russia, you actually, you followed the rules properly. So no bad on you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. A lot, of, a lot of interesting rulings coming out of the ICJ. Makes me wonder uh, if they're trying to legitimize this as some sort of international body uh, for something that may be yet to come. Uh, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. To me, we're witnessing the League of Nations moment. For the United Nations oh, and associated bodies, that well, actually, that th- this might not is be the moment when everyone realizes that it, it's just completely broken. I mean, it was already there with these unilateral votes, where literally it would be the entire UN General Assembly voting one way, and then Israel, the United States, Palau. Northern Marianas, or I don't know, two or three micro states in the Pacific, and and it, and American Israel versus the rest of fucking planet Earth. And that's been the votes for quite some time, and the entire issue of Israel has been the first and foremost charge and responsibility of the United Nations since 1948. I would compare it to mm. the primary charge and responsibility of the United States Department of Energy, the Department of Atomic Energy. And its number one charge and responsibility was to take, store, and dispose of nuclear waste. Right. Over, what is it, almost 80 fucking years now? They still don't have a repository for it. Yucca Mountain fell through. There's only so much they can cram into Los Alamos, New Mexico. So every single nuclear facility in the United States, like think nuclear power plant, it's got dry cask storage and and wet you know fuel pool storage uh, just out i mean there's literally mocks and fucking shit everywhere i mean it's oh my god it's an absolute fucking mess there's more piles of toxic fucking waste scattered across the united and what's the doe doing about it nothing what's the EPA Not a goddamn doing about thing it? i mean biden never went to east palestine Oh, no, wait, he just did, didn't he? Like, just a couple oh, days ago. Like, he made a right. campaign stop there. That's right. I imagine that's he right. came in, he, he was on he, the, he the Norfolk Southern, it, on the back it of the only caboose, took right? Like, uh, it only took, what, 10 months after Trump? And to be Give fair, I mean, uh, Poot Booty Fudge did get out there and lay a good slimer before quickly leaving yeah well he's and, he's and i can't forget our favorite to see there uh, so we could all go home evil keebler elf mike dewine mike dewine who is catching all kinds of hell up in good old montgomery county there uh, that would be columbus <laughs> for the uninitiated um not to be confused with columbiana county uh, nothing good which has got the in montgomery um county. dioxin festival there over in the township with east palestine bordering Beaver County, Pennsylvania. Shout out to Richard Grove. Anyways, uh, you look at what's going on in Columbus, and uh, DeWine has been trying to play it both ways with the whole uh, genetic, uh, not genetic, well, yeah, genetic mutilation, genital mutilation, hormone replacement therapy, you know, giving um, uh, prostate cancer drugs to, you know, second graders. So they can get their testosterone and start transitioning. But don't tell your parents. It'll be our little secret. We'll have your secret name and everything here. It'll be awesome. And, you know, it's like. And so he was like, okay, they can't have the surgery. 
But if a doctor says they can have the HRT, they can. Well, then I'm going to veto this. But then, it, so it's been going back and forth between the state legislature and the governor over this. Um, I did mention it's a CIA program, right? No, you didn't. As a matter of fact, which one is it? The the whole um, pick and choose your gender. Oh well, I mean that would make sense. Because I mean, I, you can th- trace this is all probably that politically incorrect, to, but you know, uh, to Kinsey. There's this whole thing of like X and Y chromosome. I yeah, I'm going to sound like such a buddy duddy here. Just trust the science. Yeah, we don't have to worry about it. We can talk about it because our channel doesn't have enough visibility on YouTube for us to actually hit the algorithm. So oh, we I've won't got get YouTube censored. YouTube news. Do what? Thanks for mentioning YouTube. So, after deleting my fourth YouTube channel, DJ Hyona, right? I created my fifth YouTube channel, Smoke 'em More the Week. I had never uploaded a video. I was, hmm. I had not even commented on any other shows or streams until last Friday night on, I, I guess, Beauty and the Boomer with Roar Media, our friends out in uh, Portland there, put a bird on it. Um, and, uh, you know, I jump in the chat and they're like, Yona. And so they made me a mod on that right. channel within about 24 hours. Yeet. About two o'clock in the afternoon, yeet, they just yeeted that channel all together. I go to log into YouTube. That huh. one's been yeeted now. And I'm like, whoa, man. Because wow. I had a totally different email that was not attached to the other Google one. They are on the fucking war path for me. They might be. They I'm trying got to think. my number. They're all over. I was like, on YouTube on earlier shit. today. I didn't actually check like the channel, though. I think it's, it's really still funny, there. though. I can go to routenote.com and release more videos, release more songs through RouteNote, and then YouTube puts them up and I, you know, iTunes and everybody else, Spotify for free. And I can go back to YouTube and watch my shit anyway. So fuck. Well, there you go. Yeah, we're still up there. Last thing that was uh, posted to it was the last episode of Get Fact Harder. Fuck yeah. Was that number 12? Uh, no, this is number 12. That was number 11. That was number 11. Yeah. All right. We're on the dirty dozen now. That's right. So this is this one's going to be extra special <laughs> because it's number 12. Wow. Yeah. That's and how the next that one's going to de- The next one, mushrooms, will be obligatory. So get your mushrooms Probably. ready for next Thursday. We're going to level 13, all you Masonic lodgers. And then God knows when we hit uh, the Larry Bird episode 33, you better have your parquet floor out. Mm. Like like you're in the Boston God. I can start mm, I can start planning stuff for that. Because that, that was what I got to do with the, uh, the original format on Liberty Radio. Yeah. Since they were, they were technically numbered, although I don't think I ever actually numbered them anywhere. Uh, but yeah, the 33rd was, uh, that had some extra special sauce on it. Oh yeah. What, what's his name? Um, shit. Oh, I'm blanking on the guy's name now that the guy that the Masons killed and it led to the formation of the anti-Masonic political party in the United States. Oh, William hell, Morgan. Ah. William Morgan was killed by the Masons and it was a very public trial and it led to just a huge turn of opinion against the Masons. And they've never really recovered in the United States from that William Morgan thing. They don't really like to talk about William Morgan, but um, huh. be that as it may. Well, wasn't, you know, it, wasn't the it, anti- it's comparable to what happened with uh, Israel in the last four months with the whole Gaza genocide fest. I mean, I never would have thought that Unit 8200 and Mossad would just completely drop the fucking ball and become the laughing stock of the world. But here we are. Here we are. Really? Really? That's where we're going? 
the old uh, most most advanced and and powerful and feared military unit on the planet is all of a sudden caught with their pants down yeah conveniently I mean, at just the right moment my with, favorite like a Mossad perfect storm a video the one that Come takes on. the cake is when they're saying rape matters Unless it's an Israeli. Oh, yeah. Playing that rape card. Bravo. Bravo, 8200. Keep it up, guys. Great stuff. Weaponize the rapey McRapes. When you're, all right. When you're analyzing it (laughs) at the propaganda level, like, this is deliberate, right? They want themselves to appear to be the bad guy. What's the fucking purpose, though? Is it is it just the whole the the uh, the Zionist prophecy that they they have to go through all the steps in the Bible in order for the the New Jerusalem to materialize and all of that bullshit? Is this is that what this shit is all about? Oh man, New New Jerusalem is gonna have a new Starbucks too. Oh, I love me a frappuccino. Fuck yeah! I didn't and, even and, know they had know, Starbucks in West Virginia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And 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 they delivered oh, yeah, because they I've taken full many of sugar, Starbucks. Yes. Yeah. It, there, there is a shocking number of Starbucks in West Virginia's, but I mean, to be fair, most law offices, even though they have coffee machines, they always order out for coffee. And thanks to Merca, we have lawyers and attorneys at law and various esquires as as scattered all across the country, all across the different little municipalities, counties, and parishes of this vast federalized unination, the the unistate, the new dominion state, as we like to call it, Grizzle and I. Because, you know, that's a play on words from the old dominion state. It's a new dominion state, a digital technological panopticon. Yeah, it's a new um, dominion. It's it's, the state. The soundtrack yeah. is by Taylor Swift, unfortunately. That gets us to tonight's yeah. thumbnail. See, I'm round in the bases, Grizzle. Yeah. No stone left unturned. Well, you know, and, uh, when, when I saw Chiefs, the right? image, when I saw the image as the Hotep's thumbnail, I was like, oh, man, we got we got to find a way to get that image on the broadcast so that people don't think that we were just trying to rip them off. Right. But you were first. I can bounce. Uh, I've mean, got it on the discord. First doesn't matter. First doesn't matter. But it it dawned on me that none of that shit really matters anyway, right? Because people are going to say what people are going to say, and they're going to believe whatever they want to believe. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we do. So it just doesn't fucking matter. You know, I, I would tell you what I thought. Uh, kind of like the football. Super Bowl halftime show, but... Yeah. Uh, not only did I not watch it live, I have yet to watch it on the replay yet. And I, you know, I knew it was in the thumbnail. I knew I needed to watch it this morning. And then I got high. Oh, no. No, they're not at the game yet. Like, they, they have not kicked off the Superb Owl yet. I think last week. Oh, uh, so I didn't miss it yet. No, you haven't missed it. I've really been no, no, paying no, 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 close there's, It's going to be a NFL big deal. Year. Trust me. Something, something's going to happen at the Super Bowl. I don't know what it is, but they're setting up something because they've had this whole fucking marketing oh, campaign. Oh, please tell me. It started they have in, another... like, October, right? Like, what, they've what been they dragging Janet this Jackson, shit out the like, entire fucking season. It's just like, get it over that? with. We don't fucking Timberlake. care anyway. Yeah. They'll have a Justin Timberlake, Janet Jackson wardrobe oh God, malfunction. Except, Please. except. Last thing I want to do is talk about Taylor Swift's tits. No, no, no. It's like, not that is a be short tits. conversation. No, it's not going to be tits. The, the chief's boyfriend is going to jump up there and tackle her grab the cod piece and boing the freaking the boner is going to pop out there just like big mike on barry obama boing i don't know i think they come up with something lamer than that but i wonder what taylor swift's tramp stamp is i'm going to say it's probably some type of kabbalah text or something 
Isn't she pro Zio? I don't know. I honestly don't know because I've never paid attention to her my entire life, even though she's been shoved down my throat for like the last 10 years. Like, I don't know where the fuck she came from, like why everyone thinks her music is so great. I don't understand any of it. None of it she makes any fucking sense to me. That song on CMT, I remember. Okay, so this thing is just going to go ass like that. Let me get it out of here. Uh-oh. Wow, man. That sucks. Okay, let's just put that over. We just won't. I'll just have to try not to slobber as much. So uh, no more speaking Yiddish tonight or German. Sorry, Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. I mean, what was that one term? Metzitzva vape? When the uh, circumcising rabbi uh, does the yeah, anyway. Uh, wow. Almost as gross as uh, mattress yeah. juice. Apparently it's hey. no, no lube night on Get Fact Harder. Um, How can I... I shared that video to the Telegram. Right, right. Which video? Because I just made it. I haven't even put the title block on it. I still have to fix the end of it. But I, I put it on the Grand Theft World Liberty Radio Telegram. Ah, uh, you actually put the video on the Telegram channel. Yeah, yeah. and it's like 90-some. Telegram. Uh, Remember, we went through this uh, one time before. Telegram does not play nice with streaming because they uh, want to do streaming themselves, and they're like, no, fuck why? that shit. We're not going to make our stuff versatile. We're going to force you to do it the way we want you to do it. So how do I get it? to you so you can play it it's dick sword won't let me throw videos right uh well they would if i would pay them and <laughs> you could put it happen. on your odyssey channel uh you could put oh, it on your rumble uh, channel we've done rumble's that before the fastest way yeah rumble's probably okay. going to be the fastest yeah rumble takes a matter of like maybe a minute or two so let's yeah, for go that stuff here. it's quick for the stuff i post it takes fucking hours uh, Makes no sense. Load video. And I'll just throw this up here for now, and then I can take it down after we play it. Because i still got to work on it. That's what I was working on. I, otherwise, I would have started at 9, but I I was in the creative process, and I was on a roll. And oh, I, know. I had to get that Israeli national anthem mixed in there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I know how it goes. Oh, man. Can't believe I made mattress juice. I what was it? Five hours making mattress juice. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's it's what like she it's said. like the day I made fart noise. You know, I mm. y- you know, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I like making the serious songs like Moloch and Ontological and you know the, all the stuff. But then every now and then, you know, I I get so high, I just like retarded funny shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's like anything else. You've got to uh, take the uh, the absurd with the uh, the general, right? No, I'm always trying to bring humor to the chat. I'm always trying to bring laughs to it. I'm always trying to lighten up the mood because this has just been. I mean, going all the way back to the World Military Games in Wuhan before the whole thing kicked off, it's just been constant 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 bullshit Mm -hmm. um and it's been intensifying and the probably the most depressing thing to me has been watching the disintegration and the infighting uh of the so-called independent media uh and how much of a falling out And, and it normally seems to center around the whole chase for fame clout shout when when you start to become your own brand and you know and mm. it, and it turns into a, like a whole name dropping exercise every time you have a conversation with anyone else to the point that it it's beyond pretentious you know and, right and then there's just I, I, you are know, you talking about the latest union of the unwanted episode is that what you're talking about 
when they had Roseanne well, the, Barr Well, that's on. the thing about it, you know, where I'm speaking in such vague and general <laughs> terms. It pretty much covers all of the situations. Yeah. Because, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it really just boils down to ego. And, and you know, of course, social media and the whole clicks and likes and followers and donations and all that stuff, It you know, it hits the serotonin spots in the brain mm-hmm. cells to, to like become an addictive type thing so that you begin to base your reality and your happiness and your whole worldview on <laughs> they love me. They really, really love me. Mm-hmm. More than you, fuckers, you know, and yeah, and, yeah, and it does quickly become an addiction. That, that again, that's why you know I, I enjoy the time away. I, mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, I, I love contributing and coming on the internet and everything, but I have to disconnect to reconnect and recharge my own battery, mm-hmm. just like a cell phone has to be recharged. Go get one with nature and smoke the fuck out of some weed. There you go. See here. There's a solution to every problem. And most of the time, because, it involves you know, the weeds. People may ask, why do I just smoke all these fucking weeds all the time? It's about centering, self care, mm. stillness, humility, getting into that, 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 that higher plane of existence where you realize that the dead aren't dead and the alive aren't really alive. It's all about intergalactic connection with the complete spiritual plane of existence, which has no beginning or end. That's how we're all connected across the entire expanse of the great mystery. Um, back to you, Drizzle. Right. Until they prove otherwise. Because yeah. <laughs> that's the whole thing is uh, nobody that's here that we can talk to, you know, face to face or remotely or however you want to do it. But. None of us know. None of us know what the fuck this is. We we might have an idea what's going on, but as far as what all of this is, eh, none of us know. I, I'm definitely going to have to take a, a, a victory lap and, and cut a cat's ass. Shout out to our, our favorite Briar Rose. I got to cut a cat's Uh-oh. ass on this one. You know, I went to a theological seminary, and my favorite theological argument to get into with other um, academes and theologians was my infamous God is an alien argument that, Mm. okay, if God created the earth, then by definition, God is extra fucking terrestrial. Correct. And if Jesus Christ in the flesh is the literal son of E.T. God, mm-hmm. phone home, it's called heaven. You just dial uh, plus zero one one and then the country code and you'll be connected to St. Pete. Um, and so if alien creator God sent his only begotten son, you know, die for our sins, and all that stuff. Um, well, he's at least half galarkalarkian or whatever freaking right. alien galaxy creator god comes from right you know i'm sure he has a passport or... um they and, say that right anyway. yeah and and so then you know when they say that he died and three days later the big stone was moved from the tomb and he just was beamed up into the sky into the heavens you know hello they came back with the flying saucer they used the tractor beam, I'm sorry, the space laser to move the stone from the tomb. And then they used the tractor beam to, um, or no, what's it called on Star Trek? The, when, uh, tr- teleport. Teleport, yeah. Transport. Yeah, yeah. The, transport. The, tractor, the transport, yeah. Yeah. Shrewdly? Like the, the same word of the people <laughs> who take the rich people's kids and kidnap them. And right. send them to camps to uh, re-educate them. Get your mind right, son. That's right. We've got a family tradition to uphold here. Got money to make. Uh, like that one uh, Kennedy that was sister to John F. Kennedy that uh, they poked metal rods into her head and lobotomized her and everything. Oh, wow. Um, she finally died. 
in her like 80s or 90s or whatever. That is a uh, screwed up family, man. Uh, and then there's Bobby Kennedy Jr., who was. Um, wait a sec. Yeah. Oh, I missed Bobby Kennedy Jr. being in Huntington and Charleston this past weekend. Oh. I even seen his motorcade. Do, do I could have gone over and hug? hollered at him. Nice security detail. I, you know, it's bomb ass security when they're rolling around in vehicles that don't even have plates. That's right. They don't. They don't need plates. Pull them over and see what happens. You know, where they're going, <laughs> they don't need plates, man. <laughs> Anyways, and I'm like. So he did his uh, he did his lap around West Virginia already. Yeah, got it like, out of the way. Is he even on the fucking ballot? I don't think so. Like he, I don't think like the Republicans don't want him. The Democrats don't want him. I mean, uh, he's, libertarians he have don't any want ballot. him. You, you can't even vote for him if you want to vote for him, dude. Right. And is, is he like, going to be like the the candidate from the Kennedy party? Like, what what exactly is he going to accomplish here? I mean, he, he's as viable as a candidate right now as Chank Uger or Nick fucking Brana. I mean, it, uh, vote for Painquake. There you go. Once it's done. It's, it's almost done, yeah. Stacey Dawson. It's almost, we're almost there. Just send more money. Painquake. It's going to be the best thing that ever happened to the internet. I heard it for four years. I can't wait for it to go online. So oh. many great minds behind it. It's a great project. You should give more money first. Never heard of it. Well, that's because it hasn't launched yet, but it will soon. Soon? Soon. Or are they going to do like an open alpha soon? Uh, I think if there's a, you might be able to, the beta is just about to drop the beta. And then we, you know, we test it out. Yeah. Take sure. it for a test drive. You know, I've been dealing with a lot. You haven't heard with Painquake? Panquake no. is like Facebook, Twitter, Google, YouTube, everything awesome, all mixed all together, one. but super encrypted, right? and you're anonymous, and Bill oh. Benny, and Ed Snowden, and Susie Dawson, and everybody's working on it. It's going to be super duper cool. Kim.com's bankrolling it, so oh. it's got that Kiwi right. twist of lime with it. Come sure. on, Christchurch. Yeah, Let's totally, go, totally not a honeypot. Once it actually does get off the ground, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be on that. I'm gonna get right on that. Uh, I got time that I can set aside uh, for some of that. It's definitely. like that new crypto for American revolutionary groups. Um, the one that uh, oh, Coin Telpro. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Coin Telpro. I gotta get me some of that. I and it's that's totally hot. not NFT. It's super duper fungible. Just two jumps and you're into Ethereum and over to Bitcoin and boom, you got your cash. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, I've been, I've been so frustrated this week, Yona. Uh, <laughs> maybe you've been feeling a little bit of this yourself. I don't know. But I was promised a civil war. And all I've gotten so far is disappointment. And I just want to know who I need to complain to about this. Hmm. Well, you see, when I look at the invasion, and it's a veritable invasion. I mean, I, I, when I went to make the music video for the song Moloch, which has got, you know, fucking Klaus Schwab at the end of it, um, you know, because the when I went to make the video, the World Economic Forum... 54th confab was just getting underway there in Davos, Schweiz, and Switzerland. And I thought, and, and I kept seeing video of them gallivanting on their fancy fucking ski lift trains. And it immediately made me think of all the immigrants being transported across the entire nation of Mexico from the frontera guatemalteca from the Guatemalan border all the way to the U.S. border, hanging off of fucking freight cars and riding on the top of box cars, 
we, you know, uh, people I'm sure have heard, I don't know if they all know that it's called the beast or la bestia, mm -hmm. but the beast is well, this train now. that the immigrants hang from and it chops off arms and legs and kills. I don't know how many dozens every single day. Cause you know, they're not, it's not a passenger train. It's a freight train. Right. Um, and they, and they're basically hoboing it on the train to cross the entire nation of Mexico. And there you go. You don't have to walk. You no longer have to walk. Once you cross from Guatemala, you just hop on a train. That's right. Hopefully you don't lose any arms or legs. Literally. Um, how fast does and, that train go? Uh, generally speaking about 30 to 40 kilometers an hour. So we're talking like about 20, 25 miles per hour. It's a decent uh, clip. Pretty slow. Yeah. Um, but there are times when they can go faster, but the track is in just terrible shape. We've talked about the state of Mexican rail, although the trend Maya is now open and they're adding more stops to it every day. And so that, that's really taken off. I'm clearly the newest addition to the nation state of Mexico, that being the Yucatan Peninsula, is ripe for development. And it, it's already become an international playground for the rich. Um, and now it's being totally bunked up with um, infrastructure improvements. So, yay, international playgrounds. But this migrant train that comes in to you know they did that with acapulco once too well now they can build it back better thanks oh, yeah. otis yeah um and so you've got all these immigrants pouring across the u.s border most of them literally hopping off the train and so when i went to make the music video i looked at like three or four different of these I spent like three hours watching train footage of this migrant train and every uh, shot of the train, it was a different train in a different state of Mexico. And then I just, and then it just all hit me all at once. Oh my God. Cause I looked at the map of the entire railroad system, the ferrocarriles Mexicanos, you know, the Mexican railroad map. And I, all of a sudden I just pictured every single fucking train on that thing on every single line has literally got people hanging off of it. Oh, good Lord. And I'm like, wow. Wow, man. So that's why I made the Moloch video the way I did. Apparently mattress juice is up and on the loose. Let's oh yeah. See. Shoot me a link. <laughs> oh really yeah. Gotta use the okay. Bathroom. Now we've got some actual audio visual that the Yona just completed for you. Good folks out there. Let me put the stinky link here. I'll send it over in the dick sword. Oh, uh, I have to wait That'll for the sword to load this tab for some reason. Okay, here we go. Wham. There it is. Cut that mattress juice loose. I, I really, you know, I'm going to go somewhere else with this. Maybe even do a wrap on it or something. But it's the latest greatest wettest moistest thing i have <laughs> well, there you go oh man but you know i gotta get it a little bit better and then i can share it with am wake up at death of tyrants because i know they're gonna go nuts over this all right there it is awesome oh we are just about at the top of the 11 o'clock hour and there it is, folks. We have a sighting of the master of ceremonies mm -hmm. herself, the Briar Rose. Yeah, I got to figure out how she got out because uh, she wasn't supposed to get out. But the room that she was in doesn't actually have um, uh, like a, a latch, like in the door jam. I guess that was one of the things they were going to fix and just kind of never got to. Uh, so I had to kind of rig it up. And apparently she got free. So I'm going to use the bathroom and uh, figure out exactly how that happened. And I mean, You uh, look at Briar Rose. You got the yeah. brown patch between the ears. You got all the wild stripes. I mean, mm -hmm. that she's can't be mackerel. wilding out more than Nick Cannon MTV. I'm telling yeah. you. She's, she's a mackerel tabby. 
with a mixture of orange tabby in a tortoise shell pattern. So yep. you got like three different styles of cat being crammed into one little vessel. And it's just that more explains than the multiple handle. personalities. Yeah. That explains it. Yeah. It's yeah. not schizophrenia. She's fucking it's psycho, man. Absolutely psycho. Where is my DSM five when I need it? Anyway. I don't know. But I think I think we're ready to roll on this. Uh so what's the backstory on this whole mattress juice incident? I mean, how did the New York PD find out? that there were secret tunnels because the way the New York post spins this story is that the rabbi of this Chabad Leibovitz or uh, John Stewart or whatever he calls himself now, um, that this Hasidic community, it's, it's rabbi leaders were shocked Hmm. to discover that young agitators had made these tunnels. And I'm like, bro, all these juicy motherfuckers in this room pushing over tables and stuff. How many of them laid down juices on them mattresses on the other side of that fake wall? Um, and then, oh, you know, yeah. then there's well, the you know, that's why they were, popping up they were the getting the mattresses out of there. They were like, we gotta, we gotta burn these. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think what we're witnessing in this video is destruction of evidence. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. Like and the that, cops are just I, I think there should be no it. question about that. Yeah. They're just watching them do it. And then when they get all violent to attack the cops, one of them attacks them with some fucking bear spray. Well, yeah, but a, a, apparently what I heard, uh, and I'm trying to remember exactly where it was that I heard it, uh, but somebody explained it like these aren't actual cops, right? Like these aren't New York City cops. These are like private security that are hired out by that particular synagogue, right? So Uh, they don't really have, like, any real legal authority to do anything other than just stand there. So they're basically Paul Blart's without the segways. Boom. They're, 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 They're mall cops with no whips. Yep. What a shame. Pretty much. All right, with that, uh, let's take it away, Paul Blart. All right. I guess I hit this button. New York, with 8.2 million people, it's America's most popular city, known for its famous skyline. But its towering landmarks only hide the dark world below. (laughs) This is cool. An underworld built by mobsters, bootleggers, and secret societies. (laughs)
you're wondering, yes, that is the Israeli national anthem. <laughs> Shout out to Maccabee at the Jericho uh, University. Oh, bear spray. Gotcha. Gotcha, bitch. Wow, all those cops are really cut. Yeah, they're all cops. They don't even have fucking handcuffs. All they've got are those plastic eyes. Okay. That's funny. Oh no, has Rumble started doing this shit? Yeah. God damn it. No. Stop. Stop Rick rolling our stream, Cedra. I know. It's horrible. It's horrible that they do that crap. Now I'm gonna have to go find that setting and turn it off. I hate oh, these companies, the man. Oh, and in and, and case you didn't notice, about a week ago. Rumble went from I probably just having notice. to skip one commercial that, you know, it would go four or five seconds and then you could skip the ad mm -hmm. and watch your video. And about a week ago, now you have to do that twice. Oh, they show you two ads like YouTube does. Yep. They've yeah. now gone full fucking YouTube with yeah. their ad. Well, and they, what was it? There was a, uh, somebody had an article. I saw a headline earlier this week. I didn't actually read the article, but the headline was like, oh yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, somebody had done a poll allegedly saying that a majority of Americans uh, now favor a commercial based uh, streaming model, right? Where instead of having to pay a subscription, to like Netflix or Hulu or Disney or whoever they want to fucking throw their money at, uh, that, that they would now rather uh, watch commercials instead of, of having to pay for it. Right. You know, like the way TV used to be, right? Where you just plug yeah. it in and you would get TV. I mean, and you have the like best thing we channels. could hope for in the future is to get rid of any option to go ad free. Correct. That's great. Correct. More yes. commercials, please. God knows, Yona, if we didn't have commercials, how would we know what to buy, right? How would we know what to spend our money on without commercials? And besides, you've got all that spare time that, you know, you need to get rid of. And so why not devote all that spare time in your life to watching ads that you don't want to watch? Right. Selling you stuff that you don't want to buy while you're waiting to watch what you wanted to fucking watch, but you're still waiting because you have to do this the second time, Rumble. The fuck, man. Hey. I don't know. It I'm still trying to figure out what the end game with Rumble is, right? Like is it is it actually what they're trying to to portray it as, you know, like the other side of the political polemic. You got YouTube's going to be all of your libtards and uh well, I mean, Rumble's going to be your Rumble sent bots. me money. I've made money. On, I mean, all my stuff's monetized on Rumble. They've never deleted any of my videos. And so it's really going to suck when they yeah, go. But do you to, actually get like any reach on Rumble? Uh, I don't know. Like 200 people watching a podcast. I mean, that, that was better numbers than I ever got on YouTube. No. Ever. But. You know, the the whole thing about it is I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. 
and to wake up one morning and see that my entire fucking Rumble channel, poof, it's gone. That what, what I mean, Rumble is going to go full retard. Rumble is going to go full fucking YouTube. It's just you think? a matter of time. I'm calling it now, folks. I, they, they keep saying Rumble's the free speech platform, Glenn Greenwald. Okay. Well, yeah, but okay. they say the same thing about Twitter, right? Uh-huh. And that's bullshit, too. Yeah. It's not Just, about free you know, speech. It's about profits. I'm, we already we pointed mentally, that out in one of the mentally broadcasts I'm last week. I'm myself. I, I'm bracing for the shock of, oh, my God. They deleted my Rumble channel, and I never could have imagined this happening, James Corbett. Mm. Oh, my God, and now it's happened. And I've talked about it going to happen for a year. You know, I guess I've only been saying it for maybe a couple months, four or five months. But yeah, you I don't think it's you haven't allowed long enough for it to manifest yet. If you keep talking about it, you keep putting it out there, it, you're definitely going to draw that energy in. I guarantee that. But I don't want my Rumble channel to be deleted. But it doesn't matter what I want. Correct. And it's not a free speech platform. I, I hate, you know, I, once again, let, let's go through the whole list. Easter Bunny ain't real. Santa Claus ain't real. Ain't no fucking elves at the North Pole. They're you picks. Don't call them elves. Um, you pick the name then. Inuit, you know. In to it. There you go. Get right to it. Took the young. So, um, you know, I. It's just too much, I think, at this point, to even try to lifeboat people in to the old ways of thinking. I mean, to me, it's like as the Titanic is sinking and someone jumps in the water. You save them by pulling them back up onto the sinking ship. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 like hmm. trying to teach a history class Monroe Doctrine and might is right while the whole Israel Gaza thing is live streaming on their phones. You know, right. it it's a hard sell. When you know, I mean, you you might be a casual meat eater, but what if you get to slaughter the animal for the first time ever and, and wear and smell its blood from wrist to elbow, like, like some rant cast action, you know what I'm saying? And then come off the fucking slaughter floor for about a 10 hour shift and, you know, maybe have some borscht. <laughs> Speaking of Ukraine, I didn't forget yeah. to mention Ukraine. Did I? No, this is the second no, time I mentioned second Ukraine. Time, yeah. Okay. So anyways, back to Texas. Why is the fucking why is every other California U-Haul going to Texas, man? I don't have time oh. for Ukraine. It, it, it's a nothing burger at this point. Is that is that true? Did you see that somewhere? Was that confirmed? I mean, even NATO won't send them fucking Nerf guns at this point. Yeah, but NATO doesn't give a fuck about us. Although, I gotta say, I would think that having Grandpa out in the field with his great nephew, that there's great bonding and great, you know, there, there's more of a military advantage to not having fighters that are aged 21 to 35 and instead using soldiers that are, you know, 12 to 16 and, you know, 65 to... I don't know how old Sergey is, but that motherfucker can still shoot a gun. Well, they were go what was Ukraine. It, what was it? They were saying in Britain. Was it in Britain that people up to age sixty could expect to be conscripted in the event? Yeah, that war should break out on the European continent. I mean. It, Listen, is the mask just gone? Just has to like, pull the like it was, and is the mask the gun, laying you know? in 2023 and we're just like showing the true face now? I guarantee 60 year old soldiers can get it done 
so long as they don't have to change the time on the VCR. Half not the not very technological advanced, you know. Yeah. I mean that 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 joke itself is so archaic that you know. It's like you know, it, it, a, a specific example. I, I told this joke when I was working at Pizza Three One Four. I tell this kid, I said, you know, I can write cursive and pencil, and you all can't write, and you all can't even read it. And his response was, "What is a pencil?" <laughs> and it was at that point I was like, yeah, I just gave up, you know. So then, then I asked him. You ever heard of the Rolling Stones? Nope. You've never heard of Mick Jagger? Uh, I've heard of that song. What song? Moves like Jagger. Got the move. I was like, uh, that's fucking Maroon 5 singing about Mick Jagger. Right. So you've heard of Maroon 5 singing about moves like Jagger, but you've never heard of... God. I mean, my beard is gray. I'm so fucking old. I should be wearing a MAGA hat right now. Are we on Rumble too, or just Odyssey? No, we're on Rumble and Brighty on. Oh, and this will oh, go oh. on YouTube, but like two oh. people will watch it on YouTube. I don't oh, okay. even know like why we put it up. I still don't even know why I keep up the YouTube channel. Well, since we're on Brighty on and Rumble and Odyssey, I'm going to keep with my. Uh, black Mexican leather hat from the Mexican state of Chiapas oh, yeah. that Let's I keep purchased it in the, in the beautiful town ethnic. of uh, San Cristobal de las Casas, which is uh, deep within the uh, security zone of the Zapatista soldiers who maintain security checkpoints there. And even the Mexican federales aren't allowed in, into those towns. Um, and they have a vast cave network underground um, that actually connects into Guatemala and stuff, too. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it turns out there's like tunnels and caves under the ground all over the planet. Everywhere. And nowhere more literally so. everywhere. The funny thing is, if there's one country that's literally like a piece of Swiss cheese, just literally just drilled with bunkers and tunnels fucking everywhere. It's actually Switzerland. Really? The country of Switzerland is literally. Because again, I, I would have suspected, I would have suspected Mexico. There are more miles of tunnel and bunker in Switzerland than the rest of the world combined. Wow. Is that because that's where Satan's throne is? That, that way they have all those and tunnels. it's it's mandatory in the building code. Every single building that is built must have a deep underground bunker, and preferably connected to the main bunker tunnel for each community, because they literally have. I, I could spend two hours talking about the bunker systems in Switzerland, but that's really suffice odd it for to a say, neutral country, isn't it? That. Literally, like why every would a neutral single country tunnel that goes like underground is connected kind of underground by another infrastructure. Tunnel. They're they're busily building the new longest tunnel, which will be longer than the other long tunnel that they already built. With the because um, you know they've they've already got the Gotthard base tunnel or Gotthard. Mm. Okay. It looks like got hard. Like I just woke up and I got hard. Um, and and when they had that tunnel opening ceremony, as some viewers uh, now and later uh, may recall, uh, that's when they had the goat horns and the whole oh yeah Satan yeah, that was parade. Cool. Um, it was pretty wild. Yeah, kind of reminded me of like maybe Rue de Rivoli Paris fashion show. Yeah. Well, but those those kids looked like they were having mode, fun. I, I think the 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 music that they were playing at that thing kind of reminded me of like maybe Jim Croce, but if Marilyn Manson covered Jim Croce. Ooh. Leave it to the Yoda to take you on a musical journey. <laughs> 
Yeah. Right? You're welcome. Make sure Cat Stevens with more Ramstein, please. Anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. I can see that working too. But Cat Stevens before the conversion to Islam. Yeah, I can't remember the whole Yusef, uh, Shamalama, Wamalama, Ding right. Dong. I, I don't know, it's like five names. Cause, yeah, man. Just, it can, you know, it, it, it's almost as pretentious as like these Argentinian Nazis with their five fucking family names. I don't need to know your dad's last name and your mom's last name and your grandma's last name. Fuck, fuck off, dude. Mm. Seriously. And and they do that in Mexico too, with like you know, yeah, they do. It's ridiculous. Like, does everybody have to go with full fucking hyphenated name? You know, there's a lot. There's a few players in college and NBA and well, NFL that that went that way too with the whole. I'm gonna make you spit out 22 fucking syllables to right. say my entire fucking name and name my maternal and paternal clans and goddamn dude. Get a nickname know. or something. Fuck, I always, dude. I always thought there was there was something uh, kind of cool about uh, hearing a, a Mexican, a proud Mexican, uh, recite their their twenty names or whatever the fuck they yeah. have. And Jesus, like it's, Maria it's got de Lopez, like de you know, de los Lupos yeah. Burachos, yeah. But when they do wolf. it with like gusto, you know. Like they're they're proud of it. Like there there's there's a cool element to that. Like I'm like okay, that's cool. You got a whole bunch of names there. I'm not quite sure what to call you, but you it know. is cool though. And it's always pitch perfect and said with the same gusto. It's just like when a rooster gets up just before the crack of dawn and does that motherfucking kookariku cock a doodle doo. Yes, and they puff out the chest and. All the feathers are fucking, they fan out the tail feathers. And yeah, man. Yep. It's like uh, when Benito Juarez had the Grito right there in the fucking square and launched the whole Mexican revolution. The Grito, the scream. That's right. That's where we get the word grit from. Really? Cowboys talk about you have grit, you have true grit. Grit comes from yeah, El John Grito. Yeah, Grito, Grito, scream, hmm. drive. And the other word would be ganas, G-A-N-A-S, ganas, which is desire, lust. Hmm. Yo tengo ganas por más poder. I, I lust for more power. You know, I heard John Learn Wayne Spanish lusted with for the little boys. <laughs> but I, I have no way to confirm that at this point. Aprendete más castellano con tu amigo el corresponsal. Anyway. Sí, señor. We keep, we, you know, we keep it bilingüe here at uh, Radio Libertad, amigos y amigas. Dude, I miss Mexico so much. You have no idea. That was the big thing. There, there was a huge controversy at the university yeah. and the institute where I was teaching English about the whole uh, finishing your words with an X yeah. instead of um, going with the O's and the A's. Hmm. Apparently we uh, had a, little, a hiccup on the stream there, but you're uh, good. A little bit of bufferage there. Yeah, yeah, I was just going over the fact that the controversy. My internet connection is unstable. Oh, no. Oh, that, that sounds like more fun. Well, you know, when yeah. you get back this hard, it's a rough ride. It, well, it, I will it, say this. I will say this. We are for, in the grunge hour at this point. Yeah. For for what what we've already been able to accomplish, for this to be the first time that there has been even the slightest hiccup since we got interwebs back, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think we can ride it out. I think the show will actually be better for it if we ride it, it out. It, it's, not, it's not two mules for Sister Sarah, but it's definitely two fistfuls of hair. There you go. <laughs> it, it, it's the kind of hunting and trip. And one cup. You know, it's the kind of hunting trip you take in Texas with your uh, favorite uh, law partner, uh, Dick Cheney, and uh, and then shoot him in the face. There you go. True with a story. Shotgun. Huh. Yeah. With a shotgun. Was that, True was story. that in Texas that happened? That, that, I thought it was Georgia. That, I thought that was in Texas. Am I, I going to have know. to look it up? Now I got to know. 
Oh. I mean, does it matter? Yeah. Yeah, Now that's something that actually matters because Dick Cheney runs the country today. Robo Cheney. He's in the command control module today down on lower level 14 at Raven Rock Mountain Mm. Complex in the beautiful Pennsylvania mountains. Uh, I, that's just a dumb underground military base conspiracy or dumb conspiracy for sure. No. Um, let's see. Dick Cheney. I don't know. I don't know if Cheney's in Dude. charge. I think Cheney was in charge uh, back Wait. during the W administration. I think there's no question of that. Cheney was the one calling the shots. Okay. So on February the 11th, 2006 so in just 10 days it'll be the anniversary 17 years ago of the wow time flies accidental man. shooting oops when uh richard dick cheney shot harry whittington a then 78 year old texas attorney with his 28 78 gauge, years old yeah with a 28 shot him gauge, in the face Parazzi shotgun in the face while participating in a quail hunt on a ranch in <laughs> Cleburne County, Texas. Oh, shit. Riviera. That's right, folks. Yoda wins free toaster. Mm, I can smell the butter on toast already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sm- smear that shit in there. Shot his 78 year old friend, lawyer friend, even. In the damn. face. Sometimes I'm amazed by God, my own damn. fucking memory. You I know, mean, literally. You remember, you remember Trump saying he could, what was it? He could kill somebody on, on fucking He Fifth could Avenue just walk and, right down the middle of the, kill somebody in the middle of the street, and walk yeah. right past them and not a word be said. Right. That's basically what Cheney tried to do. And then the, you remember afterwards, the dude apologized to him. Yeah. He was like, oh, Dick, I'm so sorry you shot me in the face. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you apologize to Emperor Palpatine? Dude, he he can fucking choke you with his thoughts. He's got that lightning, too. Yeah, man, like Raiden on fucking Mortal Kombat. God damn. I, I can't believe that. Like, there's been two other episodes of Get Back Carter where I've dropped some obscure historical event that happened years ago, like like Ivan Browning predicting the New Madrid earthquake that never fucking happened. Right. And that was like 1994 or, or whatever. And you went back and checked. and No, it wasn't 1984. It was uh, 1989. Something so like I was that. a freshman in high school. You looked it up. but Because I could date it to, you know, what grade I was in school. But yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that more people, particularly given that it's 2024 an election year, that more people that are aware of the false two party dichotomy and acknowledge the existence of the war uniparty and see through the facade of the fake elections and the puppet governments. And I know all about the K street lobby hustle and all that stuff. And yet I don't hear that many people asking the next question. Okay. All right. If that is not where power resides and shits in his pants and sucks dick for fucking office, they're not running the show. The next question is, who the fuck is? Mm-hmm. And if it's not DC, where is it? My money is on Dick Cheney, lower level 14, Raven Rock Mountain Complex mm-hmm. in the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. Shout out to the cat chief himself, Ukuwesa, Tony Myers, our logic chieftain. Mm-hmm. Oh, he, he uh, sent me something a little bit earlier. Uh, this evening, we'll definitely oh, yeah. use that to uh, christen the episode, so that we we cast out all the bad juju and whatever. Oh, what what do but, we got from the great Ukuwesa? Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. But 
just rounding the bases. I touch all the bases, so it's a why legal home make run. It, yeah, but why make it as simple as putting everything on one person, right? Why not a structure that looks like, I don't know, council of, of corporate boards? That way you're yeah. not actually putting any of the any of anything on just one person, right? You you're kind of spreading it around equally throughout the Well, yeah, all I mean, the different- after all, you know, Dr. Evil sits at a huge fucking table and all of the slidey chairs that, you know, at push of a button just slide into the fiery pit with the sharks and alligators or flames or whatever's waiting mm-hmm. for them down there. Um it's a huge table. It's a round table. There's a lot of seats at that table. Um, the only question is, is there really a Dr. Evil or is it just a, a common vision of general Grand Theft V type world mafia type stuff? Because it really, you know, yeah. that's, organized that's what I government, think it is, ultimately. government is basically a euphemism for organized crime. Yeah. Organization. Yeah. I'll call it an O C O. <laughs> like O C O. Organized yeah. crime organization. Yeah. Seems redundant, but think about it. That that speaks to the bureaucracies of bullshit. And and the further disambiguization and little cubicles and everyone's kind of just doing their own little part of the evil fuckery, but they don't really know of the grand evil fuckery taking place. They're just doing their own little part of evil fuckery. All right. Well, I think I think we should go ahead and uh, and get to what Tony sent. If I can find my mouse in the desk here. Um, Shout out to Dead Mouse, my good friend Joel up there in Canada, strobing it. Because I think that this is, we should probably get this out of the way. Uh, before we hop on the next little bit of insanity that happened this week. Uh, Hello, Zedra. Yeah, well, no, not Zedra. Uh, I just can't can't click on the page yet because of the whole Brave auto refresh thing. Like, as soon as I click on the page, it it starts playing, basically. Um, Oh, that Brave does the same thing to me, but it's either that or use Chrome. (laughs) <laughs> right, but no. Which I mean, no. I, I don't know, they're six of one, half dozen of another. But apparently, things are getting so bad for the globalists that they had to do this this year at Davos. Check this out. Oh, the shaman. Not even doing the four direction. And speaking like half Portuguese and half Guarani. So obviously this chick is from Paraguay. Shout out to Ascension. Interesting. A polyglot like that. Fuck you and this bullshit. Yeah. But that's what this is, you know. Wow. Satanic black magic. Sick shit. <laughs> that's right. It's for a vigilant citizen. I forgot that. I should have should have set that up a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's what they had going on uh, at Davos this year. And then this week, we got the story of the gentleman in Pennsylvania. Was it Pennsylvania? I think it was Pennsylvania yep. or Delaware. I think it was Pennsylvania who beheaded his own father for the crime of being a federal government employee. Did you hear about that one? Yeah. Yeah. That that was Pennsylvania. Yeah. And and supposedly he had like some army of internet followers and he was placing bounties on uh federal employees. 
Hmm. Like, what is all this mm. nonsense? Gosh. Sounds like another FBI plot that only the FBI can stop because they thought it up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it gives me hope for children on the autism spectrum that maybe one day they can work with the government to help violence against planet That's Earth. That's right. There you go. That's right. Because, you know, even the government you, even loves you, low-hanging fruit. No <laughs> doubt about that. All, all due respect to, to the Unless autism spectrum. you're tired, spectrum, you're poor, you're that, lowest That's just kind of the, you know, that, 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 that's no barrier to, to working with the FBI when they've got a plot of 15 agents and, no. and they just need one kid on the autism spectrum right. to lead this whole violence project. Yeah, the, the FBI is on top of their inclusivity. That is for <laughs> damn sure. Ooh, and it's Black They'll History Month. They'll even teach Month. you to shoot, too. That's, that's the really cool thing about the FBI. They'll take you out to the gun range, the whole nine. I like it when the FBI was putting out tweets about showering love on um, Martin Luther King Jr. And yet they never <laughs> sh shared their fucking letters that they wrote to Martin Luther King urging him to kill himself because they had yeah. pictures of his extramarital affairs. Yep. Because apparently uh, the good uh, Dr. King got honey potted. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, he was a big time horn dog. Apparently. People that don't I mean, know that don't know history. Right, he was in many ways, and, and I'll probably make a lot of people angry if they ever hear me say this, but in many ways, the FBI did MLK a favor yeah. by taking him out because the longer he would have lived, the more likely it would have become that a lot of this stuff that people don't generally know about him would have started coming out and it would have put him in a completely different light. But you see, this all goes back to the Pullman Porters, the black Pullman Porters union and the Chicago uh, Pullman strike, which was brutally repressed by the U S army. It was just like the Haymarket massacre when they, uh, oh, yeah. Police, you know, just massacred those meat packers there yeah. on May the 1st. But, um, in Chicago, you know, the black Pullman Porters uh, Union formed up and they were led by the uh, black lawyer, uh, A. A. Philip Randolph was his name. Kind of a famous guy. Not anymore, I guess. But, anyways, A. Philip Randolph. Yeah, and along with W.E. Du Bois and others were the leading um, black intellectuals and professionals of their day. Mm. And uh, A. Philip Randolph, as the lead lawyer for the black uh, Pullman Union, Pullman Porter's Union, uh, Pullman Porter and Sleeping Car Workers Union, um, because that's what a Pullman is. You're talking about a rail car that people sleep in overnight and it has beds and they would come and wait on you hand and foot. That's what the Pullman porters did. For right. those that don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, because this happened like, I don't know, a hundred fucking years ago. Anyways, A. Philip Randolph takes under his arm a young Dr. Martin Luther King and trains him up in the oratory style of Philip Randolph. So, I mean, he was literally handpicked and trained up uh, and worked side by side with Philip Randolph, who was characterized by Malcolm X as basically, you know, an uncle Tom, one who loves his master, uh, you know, like the fiddler on, on Alex Haley's the roots. Um, and I, you know, and you'll hear Malcolm X speak about MLK that way as well during the late sixties. And it just seems like when, King went to march in Memphis with the trash pickers, with the sanitation workers union that <coughs> seems like he crossed the line when he started talking about unifying working class and economic rights. Um, I mean, I, you know, that's one of the last things that FDR talked about 
an economic bill of rights. And then what do you know? He died. <laughs> it's like when Gaddafi talked about going to an African gold backed currency. Next thing you know, he's got a knife up his asshole, yeah. literally. Yeah. Was it? Uh, we came, we saw, he died. Ooh, ha ha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got that in uh, really uh, my first full fledged rap song I guess I ever made. Uh, Gaddafi Sunglasses. Oh, yeah. I got to go back and master that song. I mean, it, it's crazy. You know, I've got some really good songs I made at the very, very beginning. And now I go back and listen to them. And I'm like, man, that's that's a sloppy fucking mess. Sound is terrible. I mean, you know, 600 songs later, you know, you kind of learn shit and figure shit out. And well, now I'm getting to learn it all over again. I'm I'm happy to report breaking news. So now I've got this four terabyte external hard drive. Oh, I've shit. now backed up all my data back to 1996. Um, and I've got two new laptops. The The older laptop is fixed and now working again. I've got the brand new laptop firing on. I mean, you know, I've got firing on all cylinders. Damn. And now with the new laptop, with the new hardware, dead fella sent me Studio One Six to use as digital audio workstation, which is the same one that he uses and the same one that Dr. Dennis uses over in dear old Blighty, the United Kingdom up there towards Manchester way. But I've been using audacity on my 27 year old computer with the floppy disk drives and stuff. And so as of today, I have now entered the future times with the rest of you good folksies and uh using windows 11 unfortunately and uh yeah, i mean I got we do it we got a doll do, you know got the brand new doll so I, I recorded something today called groundhog eve because it's technically today is marmot eve tomorrow that is, is marmot true. day groundhog day yeah. my wife's birthday the holiday no one celebrates oh it, it's big deal here it, oh, that, that's mama's there birthday. you go um, and, uh, and so what's cool about it is when I record in the studio one six, I just record in straight MIDI. So all that is recorded down is just the MIDI quality, which is, you know, how hard did you hit the note? How long is the note and what's the pitch, right? There is no tone. Then you can go through a sound bank and put whatever instrument tone you want on it. Do you want to use saxophone, guitar, flute, marimba, glockenspiel, you know, whatever, hmm. piano. Um, Interesting. And whereas before I was just recording, initially I was recording my keyboard with a microphone. <laughs> then I got the MIDI cables and was recording piano straight in. And then Dead Fella would get that. And he would have to, well, first he would have to convert because in the beginning it took us about four or five months until he finally asked me one day, would I care to change my tuning to 440 megahertz? Because mm -hmm. he has to change everything that I play from 430. Because there's different tunings that you can use on instruments. Right. And I prefer the Mozart Verdi tuning to the Rockefeller 440 tuning. But anyways, you know, and I've talked to Tony about that on Town Hall's or two but um you know then when we figured out the tuning was different so i fixed the tuning but then he explained to me when he brings it into his doll he he has to strip off the sound and quantize it to get a midi file to then master the midi file and then put a different tone on it and so today for the first time i just cut a straight midi file sent it to him he immediately put a different tone on it sent it back to me and we made a brand new song in two and a half minutes. Hmm. And it used to take us the fastest that we could do a song was about 10 minutes. And now we can do a song in a little over two minutes. So I'm going to say at this point, we're probably able to make an entire fucking album in just one recording session. 
Damn. Where it used to take three or four days, now it'll take three or four hours. Mm. And meanwhile, there's other bands. <laughs> I mean, I was in seven other bands myself. I can remember going to the fucking recording <laughs> studio for four solid weeks. And after four weeks, we had an EP with six songs. I mean, right. But, you know, if, if you were lucky, can 15 takes of this part and then do 12 takes of this other part. And meanwhile, like, I don't know how many songs I've put out with Deadfell and Dr. Dennis where literally uh, Deadfellow will record like a guitar part or something. He'll just have like 30 or 40 seconds. And that's it. He'll send it to me. It's like, what do you think of this? I was like, ooh, ooh, I could put some chords with this. And then I, so I'll do that. And then I'll, I'll write chords for the chorus. And then I'll play the harmony and the melody. And I'll, you know, record in separate tracks to a metronome. Send it all back to him. He's like, oh, this is awesome. And he'll put different instruments on it. He'll send it over to Dennis, uh, Dr. Dennis. He'll, he'll read out his fucking British accent stuff and all that awesomeness. Send it back to dead fella. He'll mix it up. Then he sends it to me. He's like, all right, this is done. And then I'm like, well, I would like to play that live, but I've only played it once so far. And that's the final fucking recording. As is the case on probably like over half the songs we've done. Mm -hmm. And so now I've gone back and, you know, where I play live about three or four times a week. I got two more gigs coming up next week. And uh, that's given me the chance to, you know, actually learn how to play my own fucking song. <laughs> I mean, you know, when, when you record 500 songs, they're like, two years time and some days record four or five songs and literally just make them up on the spot. I have the songs. I just freestyle the fucking lyrics and then I have to go back yeah. and transcribe the lyrics and then practice singing it. Cool. And that way I can actually perform my song that we literally just make up and record and master on the first cut in the first take. And it, well, fucking crazy like, how man. do you, how do you think that's different from how other musicians do it? because of the auto tuning and it's just I can tell when something is raw and just tapped into like like you're just tapped in you're in the fucking zone uh, of just pure passion to where the instrument sings instead of it just being MIDI qualities on a doll uh and and that's what I think happens, you know, whether or not there's overt signs of it, like auto tuning and clipping and adjusting the tempos and pitches and stuff. And you can hear it with your ear. It's like, it sounds too perfect, you know? Mm. Um, obviously you don't want it to be too sloppy, but I mean, I guess the difference would be like practically every song I've ever heard Chris Cordell sing on, with whichever band or project going all the way back to before Soundgarden. And he always sings with this raw, soulful passion. There's just such a passion is the word. Passion is the act of word. And, you know, the way Deadfella describes it, it's like you tune into this frequency and then the frequency just amplifies through you. It, it's like you're the hose and the water's passing through you. You can put your thumb on the end of the hose and, and change how the water is spraying out to a certain effect, but you didn't cause the water to come through the hose and you can't really stop it altogether. You can plug it with the end of your thumb, but then it's just going to bust out. Yeah. Maybe blast your finger off. Too. Right. It's going to keep Depends coming in. Anyway. How good your uh, city water pressure is there, Jasper. I mean, I, I don't know. Eh. Apparently, they have I mean, issues with underground the utilities there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's good enough in the shower to have one of those heads where you can, like, adjust the pressure, like, just with the shower head itself. So, that's good enough. And, and at least we have hot water. I mean, I, I don't know yes. how many cold showers I took in Mexico. Lots. 
Well, cold hell, shower man. and no air conditioning. I didn't even I didn't even uh, get the gas tank filled for like the last three months that I was there. The so. sad thing is, what was the name of that town? She, um, Corzo. No, it wasn't Corzo. It was Tuxla. Tuxla Gutierrez, which is the capital city of the Chiapas state. Right down there on the Mexican border with Guatemala. And there was quite a few expats in that town. And you could tell where every single American lived because they were the only units that had air conditioners in the window. Mm. None of the Mexicans use their, they don't use their. That's an American thing. And, and the other thing was like at the Hilton hotel where my wife and I stayed, um, like, you know, we're in a hotel and everything, and I'm looking on every floor for an ice maker. And, you know, they don't they ask the yellow. What you know, where's the yellow? Where's the fucking ice, man? And it, that's when I realized, you know, that's what makes America great. There's a lot of things air we don't have. Air conditioners and country, ice machines. But we got we got air conditioners, we got ice machines at all the hotels, motels, and and uh, roadside mm-hmm. ends, and Pretty much, chances are you go in a public restroom if you can find one, or a McDonald's or wherever. There's going to be toilet paper right next to the toilet after you shit. Yeah. And as I learned when I was in Ecuador and Mexico and other places, you always carry your own toilet paper because when you get into the bathroom and sit down on the toilet and get done shitting, you you'll you'll be looking all around and yeah. There's no toilet paper. No, because it's then in you're the like, dispenser what? on the wall where you it's first the came in. Right when you first came in the door. Yep. And that's it. I and figured that's that out quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's why people tune in. It, it, if you're ready to expat, if you're ready to make that leap across the border. <laughs> God bless you. Make sure you know what you're going to wipe your ass with before you plant on that seat. That's right. Don't make that mistake. Because poop. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, we're we're almost to the midnight hour. Uh, what what do you got from uh, the great cat cheat? From the what? Uh, Tony. Well, you were talking about you got something from yeah. Tony that on, was on uh, we played week. it. It was the the shaman at the World Economic Forum. Oh he, wow! He hadn't seen it, and he sent it to me, and I was like. Uh, oh, yeah, wow. I think I remember hearing something about that in like all the crazy shit that happened in the month of January. Well, I that no Indian literally reminded me of an Indian that's trotted out to American tourists in Paraguay. Hmm. Cause I there was see just, that. there was way too much Portuguese mixed in to that pseudo blessing where you're blessing to the three sacred directions three sacred I'm, directions i mean what there's, up there's, down there's, there's and four there's at least forward? four sacred directions yeah. for the cherokee there's seven both of which are greater than three this is basic right? fucking math it's this is adding and subtracting not even multiplication table i mean i don't know what the fuck I, I, it it it, it that 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 indigenous blessing of the World Economic Forum on stage there kind of reminded me of that moment when the uh, American Sign Language person in the little bubble got outed by other people that actually know ASL, and we're like, "What the fuck is this person doing?" What you remember when that happened? I remember that. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, that was pretty funny. Yeah, it, 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 that's why, I mean, to me, every time I see that, the whole, whoo, whoo, and the blowing and everything, I just want to say Gesundheit. It's it's hilarious. Yeah. There, I did get in some German. There you I go. said I wouldn't, but Gesundheit kann ich Krankheit für alles. Jawohl. Jawohl. All right. That's it. That, that's enough German. Yeah, definitely enough German. Uh, but if you if you do continue speaking German, you have to scream it. So that the audience is terrified. So, 
All right, final question for you tonight, Yona. Uh, we kind of danced around this whole uh, topic the entire night, I think. But Ukraine? We already mentioned Ukraine. That's the third <laughs> we time. We mentioned Moving Ukraine on. twice. Yeah. Yeah, and At I just mentioned twice. it again three right. times. So, so three you times can't now. say that we don't care about Ukraine. That's right. Well, so that's a hat say? trick. So congratulations. <laughs> Wait, here. Like, and the answer might not even matter, but does Great Spirit care which religion you follow? Does Great Spirit care if you follow religion? Well, that's where people confuse religion with spirituality. The two are not one and the same. In fact, markedly different. Because spirituality is a personal thing. And religion is a group-based cult-type thinking. So, spirituality comes from you. Religion is put upon you. So, either you become a believer of their way or not. Spirituality is you going your way the way that you know to go. And so, you know, great spirit is all about the galactic interconnectivity of all life and that everything is alive. The only question is how many of the alive are actually already dead because they've never lived, you know? Um, I, I know it sounds kind of like, uh, I need to use better English words to describe what I'm getting at here, but the the, the essence of it is that you block out when, when you pray to the four or the seven directions, you block out all exterior external influences so that you can concentrate your own power and your own force. Um, like, but like maybe the way that Bruce Lee would explain chi. When it comes to Jeet Kune Do, you know, where you're able to reach that level of peace so that you can so precisely channel and focus your energy. Boom, one inch punch, motherfucker flying across. True right. story. True story. Oh, yeah. Well, Bruce Lee could do some crazy shit, man. But it's all about focusing your energy, realizing your own energy. Uh, acknowledging your own spiritual presence. That's what spirituality is. Whereas religion is about, you know, memorizing the act of contrition and the Our Father and the Hail Mary and the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, die, 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 die. Yeah, you know, all that, you know, I'm I'm just giving the Catholic flavor of it, but I mean, it, it, it again, it's all about indoctrination. I ju I just can no longer even separate religion from empire. They're, they're, they're warning, one and the same, the huh? Two minute, Two minute warning. warning. So let's see. Since get back to order eleven, I've now. Finally mastered and uploaded Capitalistocracy album, a Red Fella debut album. Made a Pink Floyd The Wall type movie for the album called Pig to Parrot, which is fucking awesome. Um, oh. I'm going to have to do it. I've, I've screened it at the end of uh, the last uh, show I did, Peasants Podcast. Not going to be doing a Peasants podcast next Monday night because I've got a gig in Charleston and going to be playing live. And I think by the time Good. I get done playing live and come back home, it's going to be already midnight and I'm not going to feel like doing a show probably. But we'll, we'll still be on for Get Back Carter. Um, I just... Because uh, anyways, uh, that that's what's going on with me. Uh, but I don't have anything planned for tomorrow night. I'm a guest on the new Prisoners show this Saturday. Nice. Uh, with Tom and Six and all of them over at the new Prisoners. 
So that's going to be fun. I, I don't know what we're going to do, but I know I'm going to be smoking the fuck out of weed. That well, there you go. For sure. Um, well, every day, really. Um, yeah. It's what I do. I have a reputation to uphold. You'll smell me before you see me. God damn, who's smoking? Oh, it's Yona. It's Yona. Of course, yeah. of course. I smelled the weed and then I saw you. Yeah. yeah. Think, and it's yeah. really good weed, too. God damn, it smells good. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you are a connoisseur, uh, you can pick these things out in a crowd. I was door dashing the other night. I went in the uh, 7-Eleven, and this, and this guy walked up behind me and said, Man, you smoking that good. That's strong. That's some gas, bro. Well, yeah. Blessings to all, as always. I love you forever. 